I'm going to tell you the story of a man who is either terribly courageous or terribly foolish. I'll let you be the judge. His name was Tian Ying. In the early part of the 20th century, he was a child in China who was being sponsored by a Sunday school class at a church in Burlington, Iowa. Every year, the children were given a little clay bank and which they would put their coins. And at the end of the year, they would present their coins during the offering, their banks during the offering. The banks would be broken open, the coins counted, and the money would go to support Tian Ying. Over the course of years, Tian Ying grew into a young man. Having graduated from the mission school, he wanted to give back some of the opportunities that he had. And what better way than to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who are in his home country. So he became a Presbyterian evangelist in Beijing, China. In 1904, the Boxer Rebellion swept China. All Western influences were being destroyed and thrown out. Tian Ying was encouraged by the mission board to go into hiding with his wife and his five children, but he refused. He continued to go about his affairs as an evangelist and as a pastor. Well, the day came when the boxers came and captured Tian Ying. They gave him the opportunity to renounce his faith. He refused. They took him to the outskirts of the city of Beijing, where they gave him an opportunity to pray with his wife and each one of his children before they were beheaded. First his wife, so she could be spared the anguish of watching her children die. And then each child, from the oldest to the youngest. Before each execution, Tian Ying was able to bow and offer a prayer with the child, a word of encouragement. And then it was his turn. He knelt, bowed his head, and suffered the same fate as his family, entering into a new reality where they awaited him. Now, by not renouncing his faith, was Tian Ying terribly wise or was he terribly foolish? Jesus was once asked by Sadducees about a, a woman uh, given a hypothetical question in that according to Liberate law, if a man died without leaving an heir, it was his brother's responsibility to produce an heir for the deceased man. And so seven brothers married the same woman, all without an heir. And when the woman died, the Sadducees asked Jesus, whose wife would she be in the afterlife? Jesus was not going to be distracted. There was a deeper, far weightier question that needed to be answered. He replied to the Sadducees by referring to Moses, someone whom the Sadducees revered. He reminded them that when Moses saw the burning bush, he took off his sandals and he spoke of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And then he said that God is not a God of the dead, but of the living, and that in God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all live. This world in which we live, this world of sight and sound, is not the only reality that there is. There is something far greater. If we can face life without fearing death, we are the better for it. Each one of us will come to an end of this life as we know it, and we will enter into a new reality, an eternal reality that continues forever and forever. I think Tian Ying was terribly wise, terribly brave, terribly courageous, not terribly foolish, because he knew that there was a far greater reality beyond this one. Therefore, he could confidently bow his own head and enter into that glory. I'm Forrest Crummel. I'm the minister of First Federated Church. 
If you have enjoyed this little devotional piece, I encourage you to like it and to share it with someone else. And whether you like it or not, I wish you God's peace. May the love of God that will never let you go, the peace of Christ that passes all human understanding, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that knits us together as the body of Christ here on earth. May these three things dwell in your hearts forever and ever so that you may produce the fruit of God's kingdom every day that you are given.